welcome back y'all happy new year hope everybody had a safe new year's eve new year's day hope you got to see some family and friends i hope this year is better than last year but we're going to focus on the positive things like this hollow wigwag pendant i'm about to make this is a multi-stage process, so this video is going to be a bit longer than usual. So this hollow wigwag pendant starts off uh, with a wigwag. So basically, that is just colored glass, um, striped colored glass, and we're going to uh, wigwag it back and forth. I'll show you exactly what that is here in a few minutes. But basically, we're going to start by taking some clear tube and we're going to stripe on different colors of colored glass. You can use whatever colors you want. You can put them in whatever order you want. And you can make them as thick or as thin as you want. So there's a lot of flexibility for creativity with these. We started off with some red, and now we're using some golden rod. And when you put these lines down, you want to make sure that it, uh, each line is touching or even slightly overlapping the previous line. Because if you don't get those close enough, um, when you end up melting it all together, some of that clear from underneath can come up and come through. Uh, where those lines meet and it doesn't look as nice You really don't want there to be any tension in the glass as you put this down um, If you find that you're having to put too much pressure it means you're not getting that glass hot enough and if you find you're not having any pressure, so you can't really guide it very well in a straight line, then your heat is probably up too high. So you have to find a balance of what kind of heat you need. And that heat amount is going to vary depending on the thickness of those stringers you're using. You can use full size rods of glass if you want, or you can stretch them down into stringers. Uh, of varying thicknesses depending on what it is you're using it for. So we're just going to take our time here and heat these lines in and as you notice after you put or after I put a line down I usually run the heat around the bottom all the way around that clear glass where the bottom of those lines are to keep it from cracking because it's going from hot to cold hot to cold as you're running down it with these stringers so there's a lot of tension in there and this borosilicate glass is pretty shock resistant as I always say but it'll still crack there but we're putting down some black now And it doesn't look real nice and neat right now, but once we get them all on there and then we get the heat in there, they, they all even out and that looks pretty nice. Like I said, you can use any color combination uh, of glass that's available, so that leaves a lot of options. You can do this on all different scales too, depending on, depending on what you're making. We're making a pendant, so we're not using real wide diameter tubing to start with, but depending on what you're making, you can get real wide tube and do this as well. So now that's a full size, uh, roughly seven millimeter uh, piece of white, North Star white colored glass. So that's not pulled out into a stringer, that's how it comes. So that's thicker than the other ones because we're going to have some thicker white sections. I apologize I don't have the 
head cam today. My battery doesn't seem to want to charge on my GoPro, so I'm going to have to get another one. It's important to have your colors picked out before you start doing this. Because you, you really don't want to put down a line and then have to go and prepare the next piece of glass. You want to be able to pick it up and go right into the next line because otherwise that glass heats up real hot when you're putting down the line. Then it cools off almost completely because you're busy doing something else. And then you come back and put heat on it and it cracks because it's just so stressed out. Because that glass isn't melted in at all really yet. So... It's good if you can go color to color to color uh, as fluidly as possible. Putting down some blue. I like the color of this blue, but the glass itself is kind of a pain to work with. It's a little stiffer than most. Uh, doesn't want to move quite as much as uh, some other colors, like white for instance, but it is a nice color. So we're about two-thirds of the way around, striping on color. I want to take a minute and thank all of you who uh, visited our website and purchased photography and purchased glass from us during uh, this past Christmas season. We really appreciate you guys. And it's really fun making this stuff, so I'm glad you guys like it. For those of you who don't know, we're located in Rhode Island, USA. It's up in New England, if you don't know. Most people I talk to from the Midwest or the West Coast don't know where Rhode Island is. It's all good. I'm going to finish this off with a couple stripes of black. If you guys have any suggestions or requests for any demos you want me to do, just leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Got one or two more stripes and this one is done. Then we can start wigwagging it. Constant heat, keep the heat on the colored glass. And you can get some of that radiated heat onto the clear tube as well. But you want to keep the heat on the colored glass to keep it moving. You can buy these striped tubes already made, but it's not cheap. A little section like this that I'm doing can cost, you know, anywhere between 50 and 80 bucks if you get it pre-made. So it's good to know how to do some of this prep work yourself. Plus it's fun. It's fun seeing the glass go from just rods and tube into you know this raw art and then kind of smoothed out and polished and completed at the end now we're going to get that outer flame going and we're going to put some heat into this we want to melt all these lines in so everything's nice and smooth again And we'll just start at the top and work our way down.
Notice there's no color at the very end. That's because we're going to end up pulling that off later anyway. So we don't want to waste any color if we can help it. Just keep heating. Watch it so it doesn't boil. You can use the L Marver and kind of smooth it out a bit as you go. Also helps keep everything on center. Because as it heats up, that molten glass wants to sag a little. And that's the whole reason we're spinning the glass as we're in the flame. Because if we just keep it there, it's going to get a hot spot and probably boil. But also that glass is going to just sag and uh, gravity is going to control it rather than us. So the speed in which you turn uh, correlates with the amount of heat you have in the glass. If you don't have a lot of heat in there, you don't need to turn it as fast. If you have it really molten, you want to keep that glass moving. And I puntied up, I put a punty on the end of this. That's just going to give me a little structural stability. While this is molten in the middle, we don't want the whole thing to sag. So it just acts as like a handle that'll come off later. So as you can see the top now, that glass is a lot smoother than it was when we started. You can see the reflection of the light in it. It's not perfect, but it's much, much nicer than it was. So we're going to keep heating all the way down. It's very important to go all the way down on that color because that's a sensitive spot where the color ends and the tube starts again. You don't want any cracking to happen. So we went back up with the heat, just giving it a final smoothing out, and now we're pulling it slightly. Now I have a blow tube with a, a hose hooked up to this on the other end. So really, as I'm heating and pulling these sections, I'm also blowing into it slightly, because what'll happen is uh, because of the sagging from gravity and all that and the glass being molten that tube has a tendency to want to close up and once it closes up uh, it really limits your options as to what you can do at least as far as anything hollow so we're just pulling this heating it and pulling it getting it relatively even start wig wagging here in a minute. At the end there you want to heat up that knuckle but not get the heat on the punty so it pulls off too easily. But that's kind of where we start pulling that clear glass out. So we're going to put a lot of heat right in the end of this where the clear and color meet. <clears throat> we're going to start pulling that clear out. And we're going into our first wig wag. So basically, as you see, these are kind of um, straight lines for the most part that we laid down we're going to heat a small section and I'm going to put a little tension in my right hand while we're spinning it in our left hand and that punty will come off sometimes with the tension you just reheat it and attach it it's not a big deal that tip is going to come off later anyway but basically you see that first wig there and now we're going in for a wag so we're going to Move down slightly, heat it up again, and we're going to spin our left hand the opposite way. I'm left-handed, so that's my control hand, uh, but you can do it. You would probably be opposite if you're right-handed. But basically, you're just putting some tension 
on the handle with one hand and you're spinning it back and forth with the other hand. You kind of want to get each of those to line up proper. As you can see, we're working our way down back and forth. You don't want to start spinning the opposite way too quickly or it'll kind of undo your previous wig or wag. So you want to take your time a bit. But at the same time, you don't want it to cool down all the way because you know, you get cracking and shock from that. Now these are actually pretty big wig wags for what we're doing. You can do them much smaller and you would get a much uh, a much smaller zigzag line when you're finished. So these are kind of big, but it's a good example to show you how this is done. So you can do this, you can do the same thing with a solid t tube, solid rod, and solid rod if you want. If you're not making anything hollow, you can get similar results. You can use larger diameter tube if you want. But it's just very repetitive, back and forth, back and forth, the whole way down. You want to be careful now as you get down to where the color and the the color ends and the tube starts again, because you can crack it if you go too far. Uh, if it's not hot first. So that's about where I end. So that is a wigwag tube, and what we can do with that is uh, well, there's a ton of stuff we can do with that, but I can make. Uh, probably three, get three wigwag pendants out of that. So that's just going to be the design in the front of the pendant when we're done. And you'll see how that works out. So we're heating up this clear on the end right now. And we're going to kind of pull it out and roll it off until we only have color there. So we're going to take some clear glass, stick it on there, and pull. It's going to kind of act like taffy. And now we're going to just kind of roll that punty in our right, my right hand. And just kind of heat and pull that glass off. Rolling it on until we only see color. And twist it for a nice termination. Makes it look a little nicer in the end. Now we're going to put some heat into this. About a third of this tube we're going to heat up. And that's what we're going to use for this pendant. Just get that real hot, work your way down. Now, I tend to work my way down that tube until it starts to sag a little, or until it's getting really uh, fluid, really molten. And then I start puffing a little bit of air in, take it out of the flame, put a little bit of air in there, and it kind of straightens itself out. Go back in and you do the same thing and you work your way back up to the tip again. And that's going to give us uh, a good idea of if it's big enough for what we want to do or if we need a little more. And once we've decided uh, we've got enough in there, we can start puffing it out. You don't want to puff it out in the flame because it'll be too molten and you'll just blow a hole in it and it's tough to repair. So always take it out of the flame, let it cool a second or two before you start blowing. You want to be mindful of the thickness of the walls of this. 
it's tough to see because you know it's not clear once you've done it a few times though you, you kind of get the feel for how thick those walls are and you want them to kind of match the thickness of the rest of the pendant that we make so that everything goes together nice so like I said this is just the very front and we're going to do the rest of it in a minute so we blew a hole in this on the side you can also blow a hole in it from the top it really depends on how you want your final pendant to look but we're going with the side on this taking a tungsten pick while that's molten hot and just carefully uh, stretching out that circle and that's where we're going to attach it to our black coil pot when we're done with it just make sure that's nice and even and circular going to do a cold seal up to the end of this bring our heat down to a small but very hot and precise flame and we're going to go right in at the end of this ball that we blew out and we're just going to keep heating it and slowly pulling it until we separate that ball from the rest of the wigwag tube like I said, we can use the rest of that wigwag tube for other things. There are so many creative opportunities with glass. It's one of my favorite things about it. So we're going to set that tube aside. We're done with it for now. And now we're going to kind of just heat this pole back into the ball. And then we'll be ready to start our coil pot. Now rather than heating the entire thing back in, if you want a really, really nice termination on the end of that where all the colors come together, you can stick a punty on there and pull off a little glass. It's little details like that that help in the long run. I didn't do it with this one. Now we're going to start our coil pot. We're going to use some North Star Black. I used this rod uh, when we were stringing on those stripes for the wig rag, so I'm just cleaning up the end before I start this. Now if you saw the snowman video I did, the snowman decoration video, um, this is the same method. But if you didn't see that, what we're basically doing here is keeping the heat on the colored rod with our left hand. And with our right hand in the clear tube, we're just spinning it around and basically coil snaking that clear or that color rod onto the clear rod and if you ever did pottery and you made coil pots the uh, the process is very similar only instead of water we're using heat to move our material you want to take your time you want to make sure that all the coils are touching all the way around each row it's going to be very important that you have no holes in this no gaps A slight radiant heat can hit those coils on the coil pot uh, to keep them happy and hot Hot glass is happy glass. But most of your heat you want to keep on the colored rod itself. Kind of like a dispenser, you're staying ahead of what you need. Three D printers act similar in a sense, where you start with uh, coiled up plastic wire kinda, 
and um, you know your print head heats that up and puts it down hot and then it cools off into the shape of whatever you designed this is basically a manual version of that using glass once you have it to the desired size and you really won't know that until you've done a few you know you got to play with it and see what you like what your style is but once you've got it to your desired size you can start coiling that glass on the inside lip of the previous ring and you'll just start closing up that hole you keep going until it's all the way closed and you flame cut it off now we're going to get the big flame going on the torch and we want to melt this in hot so I usually start get it hot at the end I work my way down to the clear and then back up again and the same principle we did with that wigwag before we wigwagged it. We're just trying to smooth this glass out and we want to condense it down a little bit and blow it out and make sure it's a nice ball with uh, even, even walls. So sometimes when you're making these, the glass tends to want to slump down uh, toward the bottom of the ball, and you really want to keep it out toward the end, because anything that's down at the bottom is going to get pulled off later, and you really want to get as much of that glass out toward the tip as you can. So if you just heat it up and keep your hand elevated, let gravity pull it out a little bit as it smooths it out and works itself in you gotta be careful not to boil your glass but you want it hot enough so that it's gonna go molten so like I said, that's a fine, a fine line. You have to get some experience and you'll know exactly uh, what kind of heat you need when. So again here, I just have my hand up and we're kind of letting gravity pull that glass out a bit and then we're gonna start to blow it out. Again, we don't blow it out when it's in the flame because you'll just blow a hole right through that and it'll be in a random place too. If you're using solid color glass like this, all black, that's easier to fix. But if you have a lot of details like that wigwag, it's going to be harder, harder to fix that. So a little bit at a time, we're going to blow this out. A lot of repetitiveness in glass. Heat and puff it out a bit and reheat. But that's how you learn, so it works out. Using the marver here a little bit, there was a little itty bitty hole where the black met the clear, where I first started coiling this on. And if you have a hole in there and you're trying to blow this glass out, the air just comes out the hole and the glass never uh, bulbs out like you want it to. So you want to make sure from the start that you get that on there nice and solid with no holes. Now that everything's airtight, we're going to give this another heat and blow it out into our nice sphere. Nice thick walls, nice and round. Now we're going to come back down to our smaller flame precise flame and we're trying to find the very tip of this so we're going to put the end in there and we're going to keep that glass spinning and the end of it is going to start glowing red hot and then we puff some air into there while it's in the flame because we want a hole there 
And then we're just going to pop that out. Take the tungsten and ream it out a bit. And we want to get that hole that we're making to the approximate size of the hole we made in that wigwag ball earlier. Because we're going to join these two together right here. Take your time. You want that nice and round, nice and even. A little beeswax on your metal tools goes a long way to keep it from sticking. It's really a pain when you're trying to do something delicate uh, with your metal tools and glass and it just sticks to the glass and it pulls it and you have to wait for it to cool and crack it off. But we just took a little flat paddle and made that nice and flat on the end double checking the hole sizes they look good so now we're going to heat up the lips of those holes on both these balls evenly and stick them together make sure it's nice and even heat we want it nice and hot where those two are going to touch and it's not overly critical that we have a perfect hot seal on this this is called a hot seal because both both parts are hot. Um, because right now we're going to put so much heat into this and blend them together. So that where they meet, the only critical thing about that really is that the wall thicknesses are relatively similar. And that you don't have any holes. You really want to make sure there's no holes in that seam. Because we're going to put a bunch of heat right there and then start puffing it out. And like before, if there's a hole there, it's not going to puff out. The air's just going to go out, and you'll make it no headway. So I like to put a lot of heat right in the seam first, and puff that out a bit. I keep my hand elevated higher than the glass I'm working with, because otherwise that whole section, because it's hot and there's weight out on the right side, it's going to just try to collapse down onto itself. So you want to let gravity keep it. To hold the structure so keep heating take it out slight little puffs back into the flame same process as you can see where they meet it's kind of puffing out a little bit it's becoming more even so we're actually going to heat this whole front section up until this is kind of cylindrical and smooth So now a lot of heat going into that wigwag section. Remember, keep your hand elevated so it doesn't collapse. That hot glass wants to slump down onto itself, so gravity is going to keep it where it needs to be. So we got that little nub on that wigwag still, as you can see as it goes around. So we're just trying to heat this up, condense it down, and puff it out again slightly. Do that a couple times, and that nub will be smooth in there. And then we can start shaping for the final product. If you're with me this long, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you watching this. Hopefully you're learning something. Hopefully you're enjoying it. So now we got that nub pretty much gone. So we're going to evenly heat this and we're going to keep puffing out in that center slightly until we have kind of a cylindrical shape. And we'll use the L marver to assist with that. So we're getting there. We want to keep those wall thicknesses right. So we're going to get that molten, put it on the Elmarver. It kind of puffs slightly as we roll it. And that'll even out those walls. Looking nice. So that seam is completely gone that we had there. It's just all one nice hot piece of glass. So now we're going to start condensing this cylinder 
egg shaped glass down into a sphere again. So lots of heat, keeping the heat off where it connects to the punty for the most part. That'll always get some radiant heat, but uh, if we just heat it hot right now, it's gonna crack and the whole thing will fall off. So be mindful of where your heat is. Now I'm bringing my hand down slightly as we heat this so it condenses back down onto itself and I can puff it out slightly to help it maintain its shape. This takes a little finesse, but once you figure it out, it's super fun. You don't want to over puff that out because the wall thicknesses will get all wonky. Condense it down as evenly as possible. Keep blowing it out to keep it spherical. Once you have it spherical, you can start putting a lot of heat. I just drive that heat into the face of this where the wigwag is. So we're kind of condensing back even further the front half of that sphere so it's going to be flatter. How flat you go is up to you. It's totally your preference. The more heat and the more uh, you lower your left hand, the flatter it's going to be. I tend to like it slightly round on the front. But you just keep that heat going, keep turning, let gravity and heat do the work. If it starts to go uh, concave, like it, it collapsed in too far, you just use your uh, blow tube and just blow it out slightly. Very simple fix. So this is looking nice. And you can't see the design in there very well because it's so hot right now. Well, there's a pretty cool design on the front of that. Some final touches for the shaping on the front. Now we're going to start heating this back and we're only going to go to where the edge of this disc is going to be. So if you figure this finished product is going to be kind of a slightly flattened disc, heating up the edges, puff those out slightly. Now we're going to go in and blow the two holes right on the edge that are going to be for you to put string through because this is a pendant so we want a real hot precise flame I'm kind of pointing to myself where I want that hole put the heat there and start puffing slightly until it blows a hole out take the tungsten and ream it out as big as you want it only really needs to fit a small string through, so we don't make these very big. I kind of use the tungsten pick to lift as I go around, kind of pull out of that glass as I'm going around there, and that makes that hole stick out a little bit rather than be sunk down in. Just looks a little nicer that way, I think. You can put those holes anywhere along the side that you want. I usually look at the front and line it up and see how it's going to set the best and use that to base my holes off of. Now I'm marking where I want the next one to be. 
we're going to take our reamer and put it in the first hole we made so that when we puff air in, it's going to blow out this other hole. Same process. You got to be careful doing that when it's facing the torch like that because you can blow glass into your torch. And then you have to clean it out. And if you can't clean it out yourself, it's an expensive fix. Glass is not a cheap hobby to get into. This torch itself, I believe, was around $1,100. Just for the torch. You also have to remember that, you know, that's just the torch. The tools cost money. Oxygen, propane, setting up ventilation, the glass itself. So it is an investment. But anything worth doing is worth doing right. So we have the front created on this. We have our holes in there. Before you take off this punty on the back or this blow tube, you wanna make sure you put those holes in. Don't forget, it's hard to do later. So we're using our hot precise flame and we are pulling this out on the back. Now I want the back of this to be flat. So I'm pulling a little bit extra and then we're just going to heat and marver that until it's flat. I want to thank you all for watching this again. Appreciate it. Like I said, I'm just going to be going with my ideas unless I hear from you guys. So comment if you have anything specific. If I know how to make it, I'll do my best to make a video for you. heat this up keep your hand up so gravity keeps pulling that out a bit otherwise it'll collapse in and be concave and since there's no blow tube hooked up it's going to be harder to blow that out just keep heating keep spinning and this is going to be for one of you for watching this whole video if you like, comment, and share, I will pick somebody and I'll send this pendant, this exact pendant to you. And you'll have it and you'll be able to show people how it was made. But I appreciate the support, guys. I wish you all the best in all your endeavors this year. Start something new. Dedicate yourself to it. You never know where it'll lead. Tomorrow is January 6th. It's going to be a tense day in America. Don't be part of the problem. Go out, find somebody, be awesome to them for no reason other than that's a great thing to do. That's how we make this country great. So this is done. Pop off that front punty. We're going to heat out any scars that it left behind and put it in the kiln. Check us out, www.filmandfire.com. We're also on Instagram at Film and Fire Art and Facebook at Film and Fire. There's our finished pendant. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and we will pick a winner and send this to you. Thanks, y'all. Be blessed.